So a little bit ago when I said the uh, wind increases with increasing elevation, you know, it's slowest at the Earth's surface and it gets wind gets faster and faster as you go up in the in in elevation. Actually, I probably I need to qualify that as being within the troposphere because we're going to see that um, actually as you leave the troposphere and enter the stratosphere beyond the tropopause, um, the wind actually will do some other things as in slow down ultimately. But when we're talking about um, wind in the upper atmosphere, along those lines be thinking of um, the air that is kind of the movement of the air as it's confined to the troposphere. Okay, so this is, would be the top of the troposphere. And as we talk about um, global winds, as we talk about the mid-latitude westerlies and the uh, easterly trade winds here in a little bit, the, these global winds, prevailing winds, we're going to be talking about winds within the troposphere. So in order to understand winds within the troposphere, we need to talk, kind of differentiate between what's happening um, we need to turn our attention to what's happening in the upper atmosphere. And in the upper atmosphere, I'm going to show you a picture here in a little bit, but actually it, what happens is a uh, pressure gradient force is created, and we're going to see that uh, over the equator at the upper elevations we have a high pressure, and at the poles we have a low pressure. And it has to do with at the equator it's warm, and at the poles it's cold. Now this seems a little bit backwards because I said warm will generally be a low pressure and cold will be a high pressure. But the aloft is the part that is kind of what we'll we're talking about here. So what you're going to see here in a minute is um, a pressure gradient force from the equator towards the poles and then the deflection in the upper atmosphere is going to be to the right and then actually we're going to see that um, the, all of our upper winds are basically what we call westerly winds. Um, they basically come from the west and head towards the east. All of our upper, our winds in the upper atmosphere. Now that's not to say that we can have some really interesting funky sort of different winds down here at the Earth's surface, but the upper winds generally move from the west to the east. Okay, um, When they move basically uh, uh, from the due west, we are going to call those. Let's see if I can go to the next slide. We are going to call those geostrophic winds. So geostrophic winds would be those winds in the upper atmosphere that just generally go um, due east. They are due westerly winds. Okay, those are geostrophic winds. They go between lines of latitude. Okay, parallel to um, to the isobars. So here we go. I'm going to talk you through what creates these winds in the upper atmosphere. Uh, I should say in the upper troposphere. And the troposphere, remember, is that layer of the Earth's atmosphere that's closest to the Earth. Okay, well, if we start, first off, I want to differentiate between, we're talking about... Um, the flow of air aloft. And so I like this kind of 3D figure. I don't know if you can see, but we're talking about this air up here, not the air at the Earth's surface. We'll talk about that later. But in order to understand the flow aloft, if we look at in general, now it'll change all, you know, daily and maybe even hourly, but if we would look at a typical um, pressure gradient. Uh, how does the pressure change by lines of latitude? Closest to the equator, now this isn't near the equator necessarily, but if the, uh, it's the lowest latitude, maybe we'd have 912 millibars. The next line of latitude, 908 millibars, 904 millibars, 900 millibars. So this was that uh, pressure gradient aloft at upper um, in the upper part of the troposphere. And can you see where we indeed have a high pressure here at nearest the equator? I know it's a ways from the equator, but in a low pressure up here towards the poles. Okay, so high pressure aloft um, at lower latitudes and a low pressure at higher latitudes. Okay. 
So what does that ha create? Well, it creates our PGF. So starting kind of from left to right, this would be, where's my, oh, there it is. Here's our pressure gradient force. Now we've talked about deflection and we said the Coriolis force is going to deflect that, uh, what would have been this wind, it deflects it. And I don't know if you can see this, but the purple is the resulting wind. And it would tend to go in the direction of the pressure gradient force, but it's deflected at a right angle according to the Coriolis force. And then here we go. The next one, you can see that um, the wind is drawn in stronger here and even more of a deflection to the right. Well, at some point, basically, it's going to be, can you see where that wind is what we call parallel? The wind is parallel with the lines of latitude. And the lines of latitude are our pressure gradient. So this, this is what we call geostrophic wind. So geostrophic wind right up there. There you go. Um, so I think I misspoke a little bit when I called these weather maps that have isobars on them, isobaric maps. Dang it. What an isobaric map is basically, and this one is at 500 millibars, isobaric map, is basically what they do is they find locations or heights they find how high you need to go in the atmosphere, in the troposphere in this case, to reach, in this case, 500 millibars of pressure. Now, just to kind of put things into perspective, remember millibars um, at sea level are about 1,000 millibars. So can you see where you're going to have to go up in elevation to get this lower atmospheric pressure, 500 millibars? And so these are iso heights. These numbers over here are meters. Okay, so I'm pretty sure they're meters. So this number right here, and they look like they look like uh, the contour lines of isobars, don't they? 5,130 meters, 5,190 meters, 5,250 meters. Okay, um, but we can use them just as we use the barometric charts. When I say barometric charts, I mean that we have the typical isobars drawn in showing locations with the same barometric pressure. So these are iso heights, an isobaric map at 500 millibars. And see how you can use them just like a, a, a regular uh, barometric map in that the tighter, the tighter these iso heights um, right here, I don't know if you can see this, but we have a lot of flags um, over here. This is the wind is going faster when the lines are tight, when the spacing or the gradient is less, the winds are going less, blowing less. Now I'm going to introduce something called ridges and troughs, and we'll be talking more about ridges and troughs. But ridges are regions of generally high pressure and they're shown here on this isobaric map over here, and troughs are regions of relatively low pressure. Okay, and I kind of said that when we have central, you know, that central low pressure we looked at earlier, actually remember how tight those isobars were? Well, so these iso heights are also tight, generally around a, um, an upper level low pressure. So if we were to kind of look at this edge on, now I'm changing from iso heights to now kind of giving you an indication of pressure. This is our high pressure ridge, and this is our low pressure trough, a trough. Okay, so geostrophic wind or geostrophic flow, I think it's the same thing basically. It's talking about those upper winds that basically flow due west to east, kind of between lines of, of latitude. And these lines of latitude basically are the, the pressure gradient that is aloft. Um, we, use, we use geostrophic winds, by the way. Or, well, we use um, those isobaric maps. For instance, we looked at a 500 millibar isobaric map a minute ago. We use those to kind of get a profile and understand 
kind of three-dimensionally what's happening in the troposphere to kind of predict, uh, to forecast the weather. This is kind of a tag-on sort of thing, something called Bayes Ballot's Law, and it has to do with um, in the northern hemisphere, the Coriolis force deflects the wind to the right. So basically, according to this little gizmo to, um, to remember, if you have the wind at your back, um, if you stick out, it's kind of neat because the L's match up. If you have the wind at your back, go ahead and turn your back to the wind, and if you put out your left hand, you will be pointing to the low pressure. And that happens in the northern hemisphere, and it has to do with the Coriolis force and deflection. If you uh, then hang out your right hand, on that side is going to be your high pressure. Just kind of a little gizmo.